located in. Green light, green deck. Everyone's good. I'm in the way. We'll see you guys in a bit. Yeah, copy. Enjoy your flight. Like two minutes until we're on effort, people. Pay attention. What's that? That is... A whale. A whale! A whale. Is it? It might be a bay bomb, but I think it's a whale. It, I think it's two whales. I think it's a baby whale. Just rest it temporarily. Okay. My name is Nick Pilcher. I'm a marine biologist and I work primarily with large animals, marine megafauna, turtles, dolphins, sharks, rays, all the big things. I grew up in the days when Jacques Cousteau and his colleagues were filming the most amazing discoveries and that was going to be me one day. I learned how to scuba dive here in the Red Sea. The waters were crystal clear, every shade of blue you could imagine and it was impossible not to fall in love with something like that. The Red Sea is a, a unique ecosystem. It's mostly an enclosed body of water and what's happened over thousands and thousands of years is that the species that are resident in the Red Sea have become unique in their own way. And there are a number of species that aren't found anywhere else. Another thing that's really interesting about the Red Sea is it, it's a very deep sea. And for small, narrow water bodies like the Red Sea, you wouldn't expect for them to be very, very deep. But this is you know, extremely deep, and, and that brings with it a whole unique set of wildlife. The truth is that we know very little about where any of these megafauna species are found at sea. So we, we know where a turtle comes up and lays eggs but there is very little information on where those turtles are spread around the Red Sea when they're feeding. Similarly, we know that there are dolphins, we know that there are dugongs, but there is less information on where those animals are and when. And to be in, a, in the best position to save marine wildlife, you need to know where they are. The plan during the expedition is for us to use the helicopter to conduct standardized surveys along the entire length of the Red Sea. The last surveys that were done for dugongs, for instance, were done in the mid-1980s. This is half a century ago. These are the actual survey zones that were flown. And this map here corresponds to this blue area on here. And we know that all of this habitat out here is important. We will be extending all of those surveys much, much further out to try and capture all of these reefs and islands that are around here and see whether or not we also have a large number of marine animals living out in this area. We, we've no idea what has changed since then. Have numbers changed? Are there more? Are there less? We, we really don't know. A survey like this tells us where the animals are, how many there are, and what threats they're facing, all in one survey. Done. Done. This is a massive, massive undertaking. The Red Sea is, you know, the better part of 1,700 kilometers long. One thing that, that is really hard to comprehend is just how massive ocean space is. You just feel like you're in the middle of nowhere. 
and you look around and it's blue ocean everywhere you look and, and to think that we have an entire Red Sea to cover it, it just in many ways it's a little bit daunting the amount of space that we have to cover it, it's not an easy thing to do it takes some training what we're looking for is when an animal breaks the surface whale breaches or a turtle comes up for a breath, those are the things we, we start to detect. So really what we're looking for is anything that doesn't fit. So there's the ocean and when it doesn't look like it's ocean, that's the area we focus our eyesight on. If we know where species are, where they're distributed and what might impact them, we can help guide future development so that it goes hand in hand with species conservation. We had some amazing discoveries today. A couple of mother and calf whale pairs. It's probably one of the greatest discoveries for me so far on the entire journey. Eight o'clock, 300 meters back. A patch is splashing just down here. Okay, so we find me a whale. What's that? That is a whale. A whale. Oh, thank God. Is it? It might be a bay bomb, but I think it's a whale. When we flew over this whale, or the whale and her calf, they were underwater. And we, we wouldn't have seen them if we hadn't have just looked down at that point in time. It's ju just amazing. I'm lucky. It, I think it's two whales. I think it's a baby whale. The whole, the whole mindset around big whales in the Red Sea has changed for me quite, quite dramatically. And the majority of the rest of the data that we have comes from dead animals that wash up on the beach. But what we've seen now, we've seen three pairs of mother and calf whales. And, and the calf that we saw this morning was probably less than a month old. And what that tells you is that now, there's a reproductively active population here. Until now, we didn't even know this was something that we needed to pay attention to. And, and and I'm just blown away that, that we're finding this out today. I think that ethically, morally, all of us that live on this planet are bound to protect the species that we coexist with. And, and the majority of people can get their heads around all of these terrestrial species, a tiger, an elephant, a, a giraffe, but. But I think there's a big number of people that still struggle to, to picture the, the diversity and the complexity and the, and the majesty of an ocean and the species that are in it. And so that's why I'm so excited now, because we are going to have the first ever comprehensive data set on marine megafauna for the last half of a century. Expeditions like this, come up once in a while.